coming up on The Amazing Art Show, Hot Chocolate. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Beam, and today our project is inspired by the chilly weather that we've been having, and we are going to be doing some hot chocolate self-portraits today. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what you're going to need. You don't need anything too crazy today. Um, you need some paints. I'm using acrylic today, but you can use watercolor, any kind of paint that you would like to use will work just fine. Tempera, whatever. Um, obviously some water, some brushes, you'll need a pencil. You're also going to need a black Sharpie marker. Um, some paper, it's up to you kind of what size you would like to start with. I'm doing something that's more long and narrow. Um, which works pretty good. We want our pictures today to be in a more vertical type of fashion, so you don't want it horizontal, you want it vertical. And then probably the strangest thing that you might possibly need today is going to be some gel medium. Um, if you don't have something like this, you could use caulking, you could use modeling paste. As a matter of fact, I thought that I grabbed the modeling paste, but I didn't. And then I got it on my paper and I realized that it wasn't, but it works okay. So um, anything like that, modeling paste, anything that'll give it kind of a texture, it kind of raises up from the surface, um, something like that, all right? And I think that's it. So we're ready to get started. All right, now, our project today. Normally, when we do a self-portrait, what is your main focus? Your main focus typically is your face. But we're doing a self-portrait today, but instead of it being your whole face, you know, like usually from the top of your head to chest area or sometimes even lower, instead, we're going to be kind of giving it a new look. We're going to look at it in a new way. And so our portraits that we're going to be doing today are actually going to be from your nose down. So you will see no eyes, no eyebrows, no top of your head. It's going to be from your nose down. So, um... When you're starting out today, you're not starting out with an oval shape for your head. You're just starting out with like your jawline. So think about that when you're getting started because you want to kind of place things in, in the right place on your papers. I saw lots of kids that made their face come way, way down low. And it doesn't, it doesn't take up but just a little bitty piece of your paper. So um, let's get started. And I'm going to start with just kind of a jawline. I've got a pretty pointy chin, so I'm going to do my chin kind of pointed. And depending on kind of how your hair is, depending on how you wear your hair, you might possibly see your earlobes um, in your picture just a little bit. And it also kind of depends on, you know, if you did yours where it's a little bit bigger than this one, it's okay. But you'll see a little bit more of your nose. You'll see a little bit of your lips and you'll more than likely you would see your ear lips. So kind of once you get it drawn on the way you would like to, kind of look at it and see, you know, where my nose is on the paper. Remember that your ear typically lines up, your earlobe lines up with the bottom of your nose. So kind of check that out. So I'm going to do my nose about right here. And we had a big discussion in class about noses. Noses are hard. I'm not going to lie to you. They are just tricky and it's, you know, they're just one of those things you have to practice a lot. But when I do a nose, this is just my way that I kind of explain it and the way I think about it. I think about like a staple out of a staple, of like a stapler. And there's a way that you can flip it to where the staple, instead of it being pronged like this, it goes the opposite way. So I kind of think about it like that. So I start out with a very open C shape. I bring it around, like these are my little staples. I bring it around the opposite way. I'm going to bring this one around the opposite way. And then that makes your nostrils here. All right? And then everybody always goes, they look at me like I've lost my mind. And then I say, and then you have to bring the line that comes around that makes your nostrils the side of your nose. And then everybody, about this point, they all go, oh! Oh, I get it. So, um, you know, it just kind of looks like that and you have to work with it. Sometimes on your nose, you know, some of you have got a skinnier 
little piece right here. Others, it's more wide. Sometimes it's more up high. Sometimes it, it dips down lower. So kind of, you know, look, go look in a mirror, kind of look and see how your nose does in that area. And then that'll kind of help you come up with, you know, what kind of a shape you want to start out with there. All right, and then your mouth. We also talked in class about that we don't want any mouths that are just a smiley face. We want you to actually try to do um, some lips, a top lip and a bottom lip, and they don't have to be perfect. Just do your very best. And my hair typically covers up my ears, so I am just going to come in and I'm going to do my hair. And like I've talked to you about before when we're doing a self-portrait, uh, your hair, instead of doing all these individual little hairs like this, I want you just to come in and kind of make it into a shape. So my hair kind of comes on my face a little bit, and it's kind of got some little jig-jaggedy pieces to it, so I'm going to kind of add those in there. So just real simple, that's going to be my hair. And then um, your neck. I saw lots of people that started out with a great face, and then all of a sudden they put this itty bitty little neck on there. So I want you to kind of think about where your eye would be, and then your neckline will kind of line up with that. So if you're getting it super skinny, kind of think about where your eyes would be, and then your neck will kind of line up there. All right? Okay, so we're going to draw that in. And then this is where it gets a tad bit tricky. I want you to take your shoulders and I want you just to have them go out off the edge of your paper. You can start to do the curve of your shoulder right in here, just a little bit, but we're not going to get the big full curve. So just have it kind of run off and then down. Now, I told you about the hot chocolate, right? But the other part is, is that we are going to pretend as if we have taken a trip to the North Pole. We are dressed in our warmest coat. We're dressed in a scarf. We've got mittens on. We're holding our hot chocolate, trying to stay warm. And so when you're thinking about your picture today, I want you to imagine what kind of a coat are you wearing? What kind of a scarf are you wearing? And yes, boys, I want you to have a scarf on. You can have NFL written on your scarf or whatever team you would like to have on your scarf but I want you to have a scarf. So think about that when you're kind of picking how you want to draw everything. All right, so you've got your shoulders. Now, you are not going to see your elbows because your elbows would go off the page. So no elbows, but then down here at the bottom of your page, if I slide this up here, down here at the bottom, your hands are gonna come back into the picture. So elbows are off, so you wouldn't see those, but then your hands will come back in kind of down here towards the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and do my sleeve kind of coming in here and my other sleeve coming in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw my hands. And I'm going to wear mittens. You can do um, whatever kind of gloves you would like to. I do want you to have some gloves on, though. And your gloves can have a pattern on them if you would like. Um, we also talked in class a lot about that you're, when you're drawing your hands, your thumb would be up. Lots of kids were doing it where your thumb was down, which would not be natural. So you want your thumbs to be up. And um, you might see all of your hand. You might have part of your hand might be holding on to the mug of your cup. And so, um, you know, kind of think about that. And I think I'm going to do, some people like to draw their mug first or their hands first. I kind of do it all at the same time, so it's up to you however you would like to do it. We do want your cup, however, to be pretty big. So I think I'm going to do mine about right in here. And I'm going to have a pretty big opening on my cup, which is going to be kind of a smushed oval shape. And then I can drop this down here. And then um, the rest of my cup would come down here, but I'm actually going to have my thumb kind of go back behind there and then um, trying to decide if I want to hold on to the mug side or not. Um, yeah, I think I'll do that. Um, so I'm going to put my, I'm going to erase a little bit, scratch that. All right, I'm going to put the mud, the lid, no, the handle, there we go, spit it out on my cup, 
And then I've got to raise my hand again. And I actually, I got to bring this back. All right, so my hand will kind of come in and it's going to kind of cover up this part. I went ahead and drew it so I can kind of show you what it's going to look like. So my hand is going to come in here. My thumb is going to be in here because my hand is kind of bent like this, like I'm holding on to something. So right now I've got, you can see where the mug is, but when my hand is holding that, it's going to cover it up. So I'm drawing it now so that you can kind of see what it's going to look like. But in a second, I'm going to raise it. I don't know if you guys caught it, but I had to end up moving my hand, my arm back a little bit because it was, I brought it in too close. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and erase what I would not be able to see. And so if I'm holding on to the lid, my hand kind of folds around. So I would probably be able to see a little bit of my glove kind of coming around the edge here. All right. So next thing is I want you to think about your scarf. And your scarf, remember, wraps around from the back of your neck. So if you'll bring a line that comes from the back of your neck and kind of wrap it around, it's up to you. If you want to tie it, you can just let it hang. It can cross over however you would like to do it. I think I'm going to do mine. I'm going to make mine kind of look like it's tied. And then I'm going to have the pieces kind of come down here. All right, now, as we're working on your picture here, I want you to be thinking about um, patterns. And I want you to have at least three patterns somewhere on your picture. So you might want to do on your scarf, on your cup, in the background, wherever you would like to do it. I'm going to do polka dots on my scarf. And then um, think about your other areas that you can add your patterns. So you might do on your gloves. Um, you might do, I'm going to do some stripes on my gloves. And then um, the other thing is, is that if you can see it, on mine the way I've drawn it here, you can't see it, but think about the zipper on your coat, buttons on your coat. You might have a pocket or something like that on your coat. I think since I covered up where my, my zipper would normally be, just to kind of add a decorative kind of element, I'm going to put a little pocket over here. And then I'm going to put, just so that it's kind of decorative, I'm going to do my little zipper over here. All right, so once you get your drawing finished, think about if what kind of a background you would like to add. I think I'm just going to do a couple little like little snowy hills and maybe a few Christmas trees. All right, and then the next thing I need you to do is you are going to be outlining everything with your black marker. All right, so outline everything, erase any pencil marks that you end up with. And while I'm doing that, let me tell you a little bit about, I was, as I was looking at this project, I was thinking, well, what artist do I want to talk about? And although there are many artists that I could talk about, I decided that one that I kind of wanted to tie this in with was Georgia O'Keeffe. And I wanted to tie it in with Georgia O'Keeffe because I don't know if you caught at the very beginning when I was talking about it, but I said, we're going to look at it in a new way. And Georgia O'Keeffe was synonymous for looking at things in a very different way. And so she is probably most famous for her images that she has done of flowers. And so sometimes especially like when I'm introducing her to my class and I'm showing them her work, I won't even tell them what it is a picture of. And we will kind of take guesses on what we all think the picture is of. And most of the time, they don't guess of what it is because she makes you look at it in such a new and different way. All right? So while I'm outlining, you guys can kind of check out some of her artwork. This is one of her 
paintings that she has done. And like I said, kind of look at it and see what do you think it is. I've kind of gave it away already, but this is one of her flower pieces that she has done. And she makes you look at a flower in a new way. Typically when we think about a flower, we think about the petals and we think about you know, the stem and the leaves and all of those pieces of the flower that we recognize to be a flower. But Georgia O'Keeffe said, I wanna make you look at it in a new way. So she like delves into it like she is this little insect and she is crawling deep, 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 deep within the flower so that she's looking at more of the middle part of the flower. And she's looking at all the colors that she sees in there and she's looking at, you know, different kinds of um, lines and shapes that are, are forming in her picture. So she's kind of my artist that I wanted to think about whenever I was doing this since we're looking at ourselves in a new way and she's an artist that really makes us look at our, you know, flowers and things in a different way. All right, so I'm just about done and I want to switch over. So I'm going to put this to the side and talk to you a little bit about the next part. You're gonna be painting and we all know at this point how to paint. So um, I've already started on several parts of mine and I want you to kind of think about color scheme. I want you to think about, um, you know, what kind of colors do you want to use and then kind of go from there. And then um, one thing I did want to do was show you a couple things really quick with your paint. And one of them is when you're doing your skin, like on your face, um, like I said, I'm using acrylics, but if you are using something else, you might end up having to mix a color. But on your skin, I know that in the past we've talked about, you know, we do, we draw the black lines so that you don't have to, it kind of helps to keep you in your lines and things like that. But for this particular piece, it works fine if you just want to paint over your lines on your face. I wouldn't so much recommend it in your other places, but it ends up working fine to do it on your face and it'll save you a little bit of time. So I just paint straight over my line and then once this is dry, I can actually go back over it and I can just redraw that line there and it's really quick and fast. Um, I had a lot of boys especially that were asking about, well, what color do I do my lips? And so I hate to break it to you, but your lips are the same color as girls' lips. They are just typically shaped a tad bit different, um, but they're all kind of a, you know, fleshy kind of a pink color. Older women, and even sometimes some of you little sixth graders, they'll wear lipstick and lip gloss and things like that that changes the color of their lips. But underneath, everybody's lips are pretty close to the same color within a couple degrees of each other. So um, don't get too caught up on you know, your lips, I definitely would not pick a bright red, but you know, think about, you want kind of a fleshy slab, you know, just slightly pink, peach kind of a color would be good. All right, so while I am continuing to paint, let's, let's go to today's art quote. I don't very much enjoy looking at paintings in general. I know too much about them. I take them apart, Georgia O'Keeffe. We needed to talk about your patterns. I told you that I wanted you to have at least three, but it doesn't mean that you can't have more, but I want you to at least have the three. So I have done um, polka dots on my scarf. I've got stripes, kind of a wavy stripe on my mittens, and then I've got just plain horizontal stripes going on my shirt. Um, you wanna make sure that you give a good distinction between your patterns. I had kids that did stripes on their shirt, stripes on their um, scarf and so it got a little jumbled up. So you want to make sure that you, you know, really make the, the areas separate, your patterns separate so they're not real similar. And then if you end up with them being similar, make them different somehow maybe with the color. So kind of think about that as well. And then I also wanted to talk to you um, about the stuff that we had talked about before. The modeling paste or the caulking or in my case, the um, gloss medium that I grabbed. Um, you are going to need just a tad bit of this, and if you would like, you can you know, use a straw or something to scoop it out. I usually just use my finger, and it does not take a lot of it. 
you want to have already painted this area. I haven't painted mine, but I'm just to show you. And um, you're just going to kind of dab this in, and you want it to be within the cup part, so where the cup typically holds liquid, you're going to do this, and it will kind of end up looking like your marshmallows. And the good news is, is that if you use the right thing, instead of what I grabbed by accident, um, yours will typically dry um, white, which works out fabulous because it's already white like marshmallows in your hot chocolate. Um, but if, unfortunately, you grab something similar to what I did, when this dries, it dries clear. So what I had to do is once it was all dry, and it takes a couple hours for it to dry, once it's all dry, it's clear. So when I went back, it was just super shiny, but it was clear. So all I did was just went back with some white paint, and I just painted over it to give it kind of that white look. All right, so um, do not forget about painting your background as well. Um, give yourself some time to add some good details in there. And I'm going to slide over my other one that I've been working on. Um, I'll go ahead and show you. This is what it kind of ended up looking like. And then I've already painted one coat of white over it. So that's kind of what it looks like. I'll probably do another coat of white before it's all over, said, and done with. Um, and then I also wanted to talk to you about once you get done painting everything. We talked about up on your face how you were going to, you just paint it over everything. So this is what it looks like when you've painted, you know, it's all painted all over everything. So you're going to go back now and I want you just to re-outline so that it gives you that really nice crisp line. So I'm just going to re-outline around my face. And the other thing that this works fabulously for is if you made a little boo-boo and you need to go back and fix it, you can go back with your marker and you can kind of fix it. You can make it look like you meant to do it. So if you got out of the lines a little bit, use your marker to go back and kind of fix it. So I'm going back over I'm doing my nose again. I only did um, one coat of my paint on my face. And now that I'm looking at it, it's a tad bit streaky. So I probably would do um, another coat of paint there just to make sure because I want it, you want to have some good coverage on there. So if yours, once it dries and you're thinking about whether or not you need to do another coat, check that out, especially light colors sometimes you have to do several coats on those all right um okay so i've gone and i've re-outlined um right like in this area if you can kind of zoom in there and see i got to where i got out of the lines a little bit so like i was saying this is your you can take this in and just kind of re-outline it nobody will ever know that you did not paint it perfectly kind of a secret that we artists use a lot. Um, all right, you also want to think about, and I did not mention this when we were drawing it earlier, but on your coat sleeves, in the areas where, you know, it kind of overlaps and it creates that shape where your arm comes out of it, like in my sleeve here that, this one, I can show it to you right here. It's dark inside here. It's dark up inside here because it's creating a shadow. In order for you to do that on here, I want you to come in and you're just going to kind of fill in this area and you can just kind of color in these areas up at the top and the bottom, which will give you kind of that illusion of, you know, it being more of a three-dimensional object. And you can even, when you're doing your paint, if you would like to, you can mix a tad bit, just itty bitty bit of black in there in your color. So like for mine, I would use green and kind of mix it in there. And you can kind of create a little bit of a shadow. It looks really, really nice. I did not do it on mine yet, but I will eventually. Um, all right. And then one of the next things that I want to talk to you about really quick is the last little step. And that is, it is a glitter paint. And this one is called Diamonds, which is the girl's best friend. And so I'm all about that. Um, 
think about you want this to kind of be a wintry scene and you guys know we haven't had any snow this year but in the past when we have had snow when you look outside and you're super excited because you're going yeah no school today and you're looking out at that beautiful coverage of snow it's got these little sparklies in it so think about where you might like to add some sparklies in your picture you might if you've done snow in yours which i ended up doing snow in my background here you might want to do it there you could also maybe even do some in your, like on top of your hot chocolate, like maybe on your marshmallows, make that kind of glittery. Um, it'll really draw your attention. And since that's the title of our project is hot chocolate, you really want the viewer's eye to go there. So that might also be a good idea. So I think I'm gonna put just a little bit here. It's probably gonna, it'll be a little bit difficult to see on camera. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see that or not, but. Sometimes you even have to layer this because the glitter doesn't always want to show up right away. So let me see if I can wiggle that. Let's see if it'll glisten. Yeah, you can see it a little bit. All right, so think about where else you might like to add your sparkles and sparkle away for sure. And that wraps us up for today. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of the Amazing Art Show. Now go out and make some hot chocolate. <laughs>